to no wisdom. Verse number seven, purge me with hyssop. I shall be clean. Wash me. I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy of gladness that thy bones thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. But verse number 10, I want to pull up. Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Eternal God, our Father, as we decrease, you increase. As I disappear, you appear. Now, God, speak for me. Speak to me, God. Have your way, Lord God, for these are your words, Lord God. Allow these words to fill me up, Lord God, but allow it to be words of encouragement, words of comfort, words, Lord God, of conviction, Lord God, words of deliverance that will help us along the way. For the word goes out, Lord God, coming and going, Lord God, like a two-edged sword, Lord God, cutting on the left and cutting on the right, God. But we thank you most of all for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to talk just for a few minutes from the subject, he's working on me. Somebody say he's working on me. Somebody say he's working on me. Is there anybody in the building that can say God is working on you? He's working. He's working on me. My brothers and sisters, be very mindful before you tell them before you throw me away, God is working on me. I am a work in the process. I'm a work in progress. God is working on me. And today be a virtual live stream that somebody in your home can say, God is working on me. I don't say the words I used to say. It don't mean I can't say them, but God is working on me. And because God is working on me, it causes me to love those who despitefully misuse me. Tell your neighbor, God's work, he's working on me. The reason I can't go off on you like I used to because God is working on me. And this morning, via live stream, this morning, via here at the building, if there anybody can testify God is working on you. I mean, I need people who can say to themselves, I'm not perfect. I don't, I don't cross, I don't dot every I, I don't cross every T, but God is truly working on me. I ain't so holy that I don't mess up. I ain't so holy that I don't come up short sometimes. But tell them God working on me. And tell them if you see me fall down, just understand God is still working on me because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Is there any work in progress? Anybody in progress, Minister Genesis? Is there anybody from the preacher all the way down to the deacon can say he's working on me? He's working on my inside. Anybody can say God working on my inside. I know, I know you look good on the outside, but God says he wants to do an operation on the inside of you. Yes. There's a famous song that says he's still working on me. He, to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun, the earth, Jupiter, and Mars. His love and his patience, he must be because he's still working on me. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as God continues to work on us this morning, sanctifying us and shaping us and molding us and creating us to the person that he wants us to be. Yes. We are all what we call an unfinished product. Somebody put that on the screen. We are unfinished product. That means we, we unfinished. We ain't there yet. Uh, sister, we ain't arrived yet. We ain't tell, tell your neighbor. We, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. You are a unfinished product. And if you, what do you mean unfinished product? I don't want you. I don't want to assume you understand. An unfinished product means what it does, Sheba. It leaves room for God to work on you. It leaves room for improvement. And you think you have reached perfection? I come to tell you, you're just one step from messing up. I wish I had some help up in here. Anybody that feel like they ain't got no room to be corrected, ain't got no room to be told that you're wrong, ain't got no room to be told that you're out of line. Let me tell you, if you think you have perfected the body of Christ, you think you have perfected sanctification, I come to tell you, I'm scared of you, you dangerous. I'm scared of you because you danger because let me tell you something. None of us are exempt. I'm, I'm, I'm an unfinished problem. Okay, 
You are an unfinished product, and anything that's unfinished leave room for God to work on. Somebody say room for God to work on. He can work on our attitude so he can change our altitude. He, he can work on our dilemma so he can deliver us. He can work on our faults so we can call on the Father. He says you are unfinished product. But we're not left on a shelf somewhere where God does not care. Where God says I want to come in and I want to work on you. All of us have been at a point in our life when we needed God to work on us. Anybody there this morning? Come on. Come on Anybody there this morning? Yeah. Listen, there's somebody here this morning, be alive, uh, be alive, virtual worship. They can say, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. Put that right there, Eric. I'm a work in progress. The Lord is working on my attitude. He's working on my life. He's working on me mentally and physically. Yeah. Some of us are in good physical condition, but we're mentally about to crack up. You, let me make it a little plain for you. I'm not going to assume today. You look good on the outside. But if somebody want to just literally touch you, you'll fall apart. Come on, oh my God. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because you're about to, you at a point where you're about to have a mental breakdown because you will not admit that I need you to work on me, God. And I need about 10 folks or 5 folks on this line to admit, I, God, I need you to work on me right now. That I don't fool around and lose my mind or lose my sanctity. So he's working on the inside. Somebody say working on the inside. God wants to work on me. I'm going to deal with it. He wants to work on me. Somebody say the inside. I want you to say it till you get it and get it till you say it. Say he's working on the inside. He's, he's working on the inside. God wants to work on the inside. Yes. So that can be a better outside. Ken, I know you know something about old school. Listen, I don't care how much paint we put on the car. If the motor ain't good, the car ain't no good. <laughs> Boy, I wish I had some help up in here. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. How good we look, I included myself. On the outside, let me tell you, if the inside is jacked up, let me tell you something. Me and women, boys and girls, so you won't think I'm picking. There are some women that look real good, but they mess up on the inside. There are some men that handsome and look good, but they mess up on the inside. And so that's why you can't move with the food. Let me tell you something. You can switch it. You can hip it. You can wear 34, 34. But if your inside jacked up, it ain't no good. You can have a full good bottom on it. You can be the finest thing in the room. But if your inside, then let me tell you something. There are a whole lot of folks pretty on the outside, but they tore up on the inside. They don't hear me holler at your part if you hear me. And so you got to distinguish between the two. And let me tell you, church, somebody say, what they got to do with the church? I don't want to keep putting mortar. I don't want to be added to a building. I don't want to put paint on the building. If we ain't got the inside right, I wish I had some help up there. All we do is build a bigger, bigger, bigger church for more devils to pack up in there. They don't hear me up in here. And let me tell you something. Quit fixing up the outside and tell your neighbor work on the inside. a transformation on the inside so there can be some confirmation on the outside. Remember what you mean confirmation on the outside. Sure. For what they see on the outside is confirmation what's on the inside. Uh -huh. Let me, they didn't get that? Since you didn't get that, they didn't get that early? Some of us fake. You look good on the outside but when they open you up, you're riding. You ain't ain't that good, ain't that good about your toe up, jacked up, nasty attitude. Y'all don't hear me up in the yeah. But let me tell you, I, I don't want God to just work on my outside. I can put on a suit, you can look good. But if the inside jacked up, I wish I had some help up in here. And there are a whole lot of folks I'm trying to help you this morning. I'm talking about my folks, your folks, and the church folks. Yeah, I ain't never scared. There are a whole lot of people that look good on the outside, but they tore up on the inside. Tell them what's on the inside, what's on the inside. Inside. Tell them let God work on it. When they let God work on the inside, watch this, Sheba. We can love 
love everybody. You can love thy neighbor as thyself. And when folk do your wrong with God, what's on the inside? You can know they don't like you, but you can love them anyway. I wish I had some folks up in here. I, I hear you. I hear you at home. You say, I know God working on me. Because what happened is, you love the folk that you know really don't love you back. You treat them right when you know they really trying to treat you wrong. Because God is working on the inside. Here we go. Philippians says this. God is working in you. Philippians 2.13. Giving you the desire and the power to do what is pleasing to him. Is there anybody who can completely be honest that you need God to do a makeover? That's all right. Thank you, Kathy, for that one amen. I put one amen right there because most folk don't like to admit that God need to work on them. Most folk don't need to like to admit that I'm a work in progress. I need God to do something. I need God to rebuild. I know you look, I know you're looking good. Here we go. So here we go. Philippians 1 and 6 said, be confident in this very thing. Yes, be confident. That which he begun a good work in, in you will perform until the day. God wants to do it for you. But you got to let him perform it. Okay. He can't perform it if you won't let him Jesus. come, come in. And the problem is God wants to work on you, but we won't let him come in. Uh -huh. How do I let him come in? This for free right here, not with the text. Here we go. You got to move from religion to relationship. Mm -hmm. Woo. Woo. Too many got, people got religion packed down. They know how to come to church and clap. They know how to come to church and say amen. They know how to they know how to shout. They know how to do a holy day. They got all that stuff down packed. But do you really have a relationship with God? Oh He's working on me. And so none of our CNBC has arrived yet. We're still in the work in progress. And if by chance you think you reach perfection, live long enough, spend some time around a bad co-worker. Spend some time around a child that's being mischievous. Spend some time around some folk that can get on your nerve. Uh -huh. And you'll find out you ain't where you thought you really were. Oh, I'm talking to you this morning that's sitting beside your bed because, yeah, you can go ahead and repeat. Ain't nobody got to know. Keep looking at me on the screen because you went out just this week and you thought you were further than you were, but you realize you ain't further than you thought you really was when you start to say and do some stuff that you really shouldn't have did. Here we go. Watch this. So stop looking down on folks. Stop expecting from other folks what you have not obtained yourself. Stop expecting people to be perfect because the same God that's working on you and in you is the same God that can work on them. The Bible says right here, Matthew's gospel, I'm going to give it to you. He said, Matthew 5, 45, that you may be children of the Father who is in him. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send the rain on the just as well as the unjust. Uh -huh. I mean, he's sipping the rains on the bad and the good, the just and the unjust. And I'm glad today I'm not what I used to be, but I'm not what I will be. Boy, y'all miss that shout right there. I'm not what I used to be, but I'm not what I will be, meaning God got some greater work for me. Somebody say he's working on me. Somebody say he's working on me. He's working on me. Somebody say I'm a work in progress. He's, he's working on my hands. He's working on my feet. He's working on the inside to change the outside. Anybody, he said he's working early in the morning and he's working late at night. So here in the text we find in Psalm 51, we find the chief musician of Psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into land and gone in to Bathsheba. Most people focus on what we call David, Psalm 51. We focus on what we call David's weakness, but a lot of people will not focus on your strength. Then some people like to focus on people's strength, but they will not focus on their weakness. I wish I had some help up in here. We like to talk about David's sin, but we don't want to talk about how David came out of sin. Boy, y'all don't hear me right there. Tell them I'm a work in progress. Anybody messed up beside the preacher sometimes? Anybody? Let me tell you, messed up mean I did some stuff, I said some stuff, I looked at some stuff I shouldn't have looked at, but tell them I'm glad God working on me. Anybody glad God working on you? So David here, this is the chief musician, a psalm of David. Uh -huh. Watch this. Verse 1 and 2. 
In Psalm 51, David prays for pardon. Verse 3 through 5, he confesses his sins. Come on now. But verse 6 through 14, he prays for a renewing of God's grace. Yeah. Woo! Verse 15 through 17 promises unfilled thankfulness. Verse 18 and 19, he prays for the whole church. My God. Amen. Amen. The very folk, can you do no church folk will be the first one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't get quiet on me right there. I put right there, she, but they're going to get quiet right there. Because they don't really like the I ain't never scared Kenny because church folk are the one, the very one that will try to beat you down when you come up a little short. And them ought to be the very one that be praying for you. You ain't got to condone it, but you ought to at least pray for them. You ain't got to talk about them, but you ought to pray for them. They don't hear me, Miss Angela. And too many people like to discuss people, but they don't like to talk to Jesus about them. I wish I had some help up in here. Let me tell you something because you are one step from sinning, you one step from bankruptcy, you one step from messing up, you one step from and so tell your neighbor, I'm going to talk to Say, neighbor, I'm a work in progress. Say, neighbor, I'm a work in progress. Say, neighbor, I'm a work in progress. A work in so David says here. He says in the top verse, he said, have mercy. I'm ready to leave you. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to thy love, kindness. Ain't you glad the way God loves? God don't bring up who you used to be. According unto thy multitude of tender mercies. So number one, what does David do? It, because he's a working, he's working on him. He's working on him. He's working on David. What does David do? Watch this. We see he recognizes his shortcomings. He recognizes his shortcomings. That was the only way God could start the work progress. Mm -hmm. Y'all still with me? Come on. He recognizes his shortcomings. He recognizes that he was not where he should be. So he tells God, he said, have mercy upon me, O God. Today, if you're not where you ought to be, ask the Lord to have mercy on you. If you did something wrong, let's ask the Lord to have some mercy on us. If we said something we shouldn't have said, ask the Lord to have mercy. Because David said, if the process going to begin, I'm trying to help you, I'm going to teach you this right here. If the process going to begin, if God going to be able to work on me, you never bake the cake without cutting on the hood. So God said, if I'm going to work on you, you first got to let me in and receive me. Boy, God, I'm trying to help him right here. And so God says, first thing you got to do is you got to recognize simply me, admit I, I fall in short. I fall in short. I messed up. I done wrong. I don't know how, whatever words you want to put in. God, I did some stuff I shouldn't have did. And so he recognized his shortcoming. He said, have mercy on me. Oh God, according to thy love and kindness, according to thy multitude of tender mercy, block out my transgression. Transgression right there is simply block out my sins. Transgression is talking about his sin. So he recognized it, but Matthew 6 and 12 tells us this. And forgive us of our shortcomings. And we also forgive those who have failed in the duty towards us. That's why it's vital to forgive other folks. He said, and forgive us of our shortcomings. But then he recognized the shortcoming, but he recognized it, it was himself. He said, it's my problem. Ain't nobody else's problem. It's my problem. But then watch this what he does. He remembers the Savior. Who he asked. He said, have mercy on me, O God. He remembered the Savior, and the same God that says in the word, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So he remembers the Savior when he says that. Point number two, watch this. Watch this. Let me read these scriptures here. Verse number two, watch me through my, my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my, I acknowledge my transgressions and sins ever before he acknowledges him. I'm a work in progress. You're a work in progress. This before you put it on the screen. Work on yourself before you try to work on somebody else. Yeah. I'm right now. Yeah. That's all right, yeah. Too many people trying to operate on other folk 
when they really need operating on themselves. I wish I had some help up in here. We want to tell about everybody else, but work on your eye. Let me tell you why I die daily. That's why I pray daily. I ask the Lord to forgive me every day and night as I lay down and I get up in the morning. So here he said, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. What that means, I was shaping in iniquity. He recognized, watch this, he said, I was born in sin. He said, But I, I know I was born again in God. Mm. He said, And sin did my, and my mother's conceived me. He said, but purge me with the hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Watch this. This is going to get you. He requests the Savior to work on him. Mm -hmm. Put it right there. We see the David's request for the Savior to work on him. What he says in verse 2. Wash me thoroughly for my iniquity. Cleanse me from my... He makes a request to the Lord. If you need God to work on you, let your request be made known today. Amen. Whatever you need God to do for you in your life, if you want to really change your attitude, God can change it. If you want to change the way you're acting, God can change it. If you want to change the direction that your life is going in, God can change it. But what you got to do, number one, you got to start the process. Now that you got to start the process, you got to tell God everything that you need him to do. So he makes the request, the Savior, to start working on him. What's your request today? What do you need God to work on? What what do you need God to work on? What do you need God to work on? Let's just holler out in the sanctuary right quick. What you need God to work on? What you need God to work on? Come on, what you need God to work on? Oh, y'all gonna play cute with me. Y'all don't need God to work on that. Don't fool around and play with me just because you're in the choir, you're a deacon, and you're a preacher. All, if the preacher can admit he need God to work on some of his mind and his life, then it's time for us to start saying, God, I need you to come in because I've been doing some things, saying some things I should have said. So you ain't gotta say it out loud. Just say, Whatever you need God to work on, let your request be known to the Savior. He said, John 15 and 7, we go home now, Caleb. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Whatsoever you wish, it will be done. But you got to first make the... You got to first make the what? Request. No, he said, Philippians 4 and 6, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, prayer and supplication, thank you, and let your request be known unto who? Oh, if you want God to work on you, uh -huh. you first got to let him know. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, it's all right. I can't tell you who to talk to. But quit telling everybody else your business Come on, now. who can't get you out of trouble. But you ought to tell the one that can trouble the wall. And I mean what you tell the Lord. He, he won't tell no. nobody else. But what you got to do is You got to make your request Unto the Lord And I need somebody this morning to say Work on Work on me Lord I need those folks that really need God To work on you And that don't mean You in bad condition But can I tell you If you let a little condition become bad It will become a bigger condition And you need God to work on you John 1 1 and 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness is there anybody here need God to come on the inside of you I need you to do me a favor brother Deacon I know you got your suit put on you ain't got to take it off but open your coat up right quick and say, Lord, come into my heart. I need a heart transplant because I don't love like I used to do. I don't treat people like I used to treat them. Anybody need him to come in? I need you to let him in on the inside and say, Lord, come into my earways that I don't hear everything and don't take everything in. But if you come into my earways, you'll get in my mind. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Say, neighbor, 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 I'm just a work in progress. And if the Lord start working on me, I want him to work on the head down. I want him to work on my mind. I want him to work on my heart. I want him to work on my hands. I want him to work on my feet. Anybody here can say you're a work in progress, but I need you to do me a favor. 
If you need to be a work in progress, I need you to get on the potter's wheel. Get on the potter's wheel. And he'll mold you. He'll shape you. He'll turn your life. He'll turn your life around. Somebody shout yeah. David recognized that he had messed up. But then David made a request. He said, Lord, I see two requests out here. But then he said, wash me of my transgression. He went and asked the Lord to wash him. But as I get ready to leave you, because the Lord is working on me. And while the Lord is working on me, anybody need to get in motion right quick. Act like you're on your power, sugar. Act like you're getting in motion. I wish I had my boy here, Miss Angela. I wish I had my boy here. If I had my boy here this morning, And say, Lord, I got a request. Here am I, standing in the need of prayer. Here am I, God. Come on in. I need, I need a transformation. What does a transformation do? It'll make you love. It'll give you peace. It'll give you joy. It'll give you hope when God comes in. You ain't got to have a whole lot of folks around you. But as long as I got Cain Jesus, I don't need nobody else. You ain't got to have all of them as long as you got King Jesus. But last thing the Bible says, the Bible says, David says in verse number 10, created me a clean heart, renewing me that right kind of spirit. church 
in our lives and in the government. Yes. yes. And he's doing it right now. But let me tell you, some people that you saw that were down are bouncing back. So people you thought weren't going to make it, they're going to make it back. Because they're going to allow God to come on the inside. They may have to be a down for a while, she Maybe down for two months, three months, two weeks, four weeks, maybe down for six months. I like the number three. Because the number three stands for his resurrection. Come on now. In those three weeks, those three days that they're down, those three months that they're down, God is resurrecting them and he's renewing them afresh. Good. And while they're down, he's got time to work on them. Oh, and then the number five stands for grace. He said, they will mount up with wings of the eagle. They won't get tired. They'll walk and not be weary. Isaiah 41 and 1 said, coastlands, listen to me in silence. Let the people gain new strength. Let them come forward. Let them speak and let them come together for judgment. Romans 12 and 2 says this, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Therefore do not lose heart but thy outer man is decaying yet our inner man is becoming renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 I give it to you again. Therefore do not lose heart but thy outer man is decaying yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. He's working on me. He's working on me. Let us pray.